So, last year, I kind of fell down a mountain a little bit and kind of injured my, my wrist. And it's been playing up a bit, and my friend recommended getting something called glucosamine, which is a vitamin that's meant to help joints and things. So I went down to Asda, and I was in the vitamin aisle, and I was presented with a whole wall of little plastic tubs with tiny writing all over the place. And I searched for a good five minutes to try and find this glucosamine, and I couldn't see it anywhere. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if I could make an app that would take a picture, and then I'd tell it what text I was looking for, and it would search through the picture, and if it found the text, highlight it so I could see where it was in real life. And I had a quick search then and there in the Asda aisle on the App Store, and I couldn't quite find anything like it. So, with no prior experience whatsoever in writing an app, that's exactly what I'm going to try and do. Write something that will search through a picture for the text that I want and show me where it is. So the main problem that we've got with this challenge is that computers, when they're looking at a picture, they can't understand that that's text any more than they can understand that that's a labradoodle on a surfboard. To computers, a picture is just made of tiny blocks of colour called pixels. So you can't actually just select the text out of a picture. It doesn't know what it is. Right, so here's the photo that I took in the Asda vitamin aisle. As you can see, there are bottles everywhere. I mean, it's good resolution, so you can actually read it when you zoom in, so hopefully the computer will be able to read it. But it's a complete visual mess of information. I'm going to be really interested to see what a computer makes of this. Now, I did go on the Asda website beforehand to make sure they sell it, and I do know where it is in this picture, but we're going to get the computer to find it for us. So if this mountain is this project, and the summit is having an app where I can search for text in photos I've just taken, we're currently just about to get into the car at home to travel to the mountain. Okay, so I've laid out what I want my app to do, but where do I start? Right, so I've got to get my bearings and find out what tools are available to help me. This part is basically googling the absolute living shite out of everything to do with making Android apps and image recognition. So what we need is a montage. Beginner tutorial series. So it looks like Google has a free piece of software called Android Studio, and that lets you make apps. When you're a programmer, if there's a specific problem you need to solve, you'll often find someone has already found out how to solve it and then made their code available for free to use in your own apps. In this case, Google already has code that lets you find text in an image. And that is great, because I simply couldn't write code that complicated and that clever on my own. They also have existing code that talks to the camera in your phone and takes a photo to use in your app. So, that's a huge weight lifted for me. Basically, all I have to do is figure out how to wire everything together. Okay, so I've installed Android Studio and started a new project. And first off, I'm going to give it this simple image that I just made in paint, just to see if we can read some text from it before worrying about how to actually take photos with the app or giving it the full-blown picture. Okay, so first off, I just want to get the test picture into the new app. So I'm just going to try dragging it in. No, nope, that's not worked. Um, okay, uh, I'm going to see if there's like a insert picture button. So at the moment I can't actually even figure out how to get a photo into Android Studio. So I'm going to get YouTube to give me a crash course and I'll be right back. So I think I've finally got my head around the basics. Um, what it turns out you have to do is copy a picture into a very specific folder on your computer that's part of the app and then it shows up here to use as an image view source. So. After over an hour of starting this project, I've finally got a crappy little picture on the screen. Woo! -hoo! So while it's true I don't have any experience writing Android apps, I've got experience programming with code, at least for websites, and that's the only reason I'm even trying this. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna copy and paste Google's existing special code into my app. Uh, and that will allow it to look at a picture and find text. It's called Google ML Toolkit Text Recognizer. ML stands for machine learning. It uses artificial intelligence to recognize anything that looks like text in a photo. The amount of code that actually does the text reading is ginormous. We don't copy and paste the code in its entirety. It would fill our screen hundreds of thousands of times over. Instead, the code is all neatly packaged up and kept in the background. The code in our app just basically says, use this Google code over here. One of the awesome things that the Android App Studio does is it's got this kind of fake little Android phone that runs inside it that you can test your app on. It's like a fully functional Android phone that runs on your computer and it automatically loads your app onto it and runs it. And this is called an emulator, so it emulates the phone on your computer. So this is it, this is the actual app running on the emulator on my computer in this pretend Android phone. So where it says this is my text here, that's the picture that we put in. So that's not actual text that can be highlighted, that lives in a picture. The hello world bit here was just there when I started the app and I've not deleted it. And here's the button that we added, so we got something to click to run the code. I've also just added a little text box at the bottom that we can use to display the text that it finds in the picture. Okay, so moment of truth for this bit. I'm gonna click the button and see what happens. Hopefully it won't crash. If everything goes according to plan, the app will look at this picture up here, and it will spot the text in it, and it will write it out down here. Here we go. Oh my god, it's actually worked, look at that. Brilliant, that is absolutely fantastic. It has done its job. Look, it's real text that we can select. It's actually found it in that picture. This is brilliant. I think we're gonna make this work. Well, that's really promising. But I'm gonna be honest, it wasn't all roses getting that to work. There was quite a bit of trial and error putting the code in different places, but we got there eventually. Now let's throw our actual as the vitamin aisle photo into it and see what happens. Okay, fingers crossed, I'm gonna press the button and see what happens. Is it doing anything? Oh yes, you beauty, look at that. We've got the text. This shelf is for additional stock. That's exactly what it says at the top. It's in a tiny box here, so let's copy it all into Notepad and see what we've got. Look at that. Slim Fast, Wellman, Centrum. Is our text in there? Oh no, wait. We've got a problem. It's not seen the glucosamine text. Right, okay, let's go into problem solving mode. Uh, let's crop the part of the picture out that's got the text in it. So I'm gonna give the game away here. It's actually up here in the top right. So let's just select that. There we go, look, glucosamine sulfate and vitamin C. So let's save this as Asda cropped. Let's throw that in. Run it again, let's see what happens. Okay, so here's the app running, but with a really closely cropped in picture with just the text in that we want. There we go, look, glucosamine. So that tells us that the app is capable of reading the text, but for some reason when it's in the huge picture with all the other text, it doesn't pull it out. So I've asked a question on the Stack Overflow website, which is where people give you answers to your coding problems. I've asked if anybody knows if there's a limit to the amount of text that it can return from one photo. So while I'm waiting to see if anybody will respond to that question, I'm gonna see if we can get the app taking photographs. So if you ask Google how many different models of Android device there are, it says 24,000. And that figures from 2015, seven years ago. It's the most up-to-date one that I can find. So to save us having to write code that'll operate the cameras on tens of thousands of different Android devices, again, Google gives you free code that'll do all that for you, but in theory, we can just drop into our app. So the photograph code needs to do quite a few more steps than the text recognizer code. Because it's got to do things like show you a preview of what the camera can see on your phone. Then it's got to be able to take the picture, save it to your phone, and then it's got to be able to present us with the photo to use in the app. So considering how much trouble I had just getting one tiny picture to show on the screen without any of this stuff, this should be quite interesting. So I think I'm just gonna get stuck in.
So pretty much straight off I've run into trouble. It's not liking the code that I'm copying in from the internet. And I think it might be for an older version of Android Studio. It's given me a lot of errors and every single one's taking between 10 minutes and an hour to Google and get to the bottom of it. And this is straight up just due to my lack of experience. Somebody that writes apps for a living would just be like, oh yeah, I forgot to click this, this and this. But for me, I need hand-holding by Google search every single step of the way. Which, you know, it's something that I'm brand new to. That's it's not a problem. It's uh, I mean, there's always going to be a steep learning curve for this kind of thing if you just take it on out the blue. Just got to remember that I'm a beginner and I'm taking baby steps in a massive project. So I'm just exposing myself to as much of the process as I can, hoping that my brain just soaks it all in and then hopefully cottons onto the direction it needs to be going in. I mean, the human brain's the most complex thing that we know of in the entire universe. So I'm still confident we're gonna crack this. So now I've broken the code that reads the text from the picture. The thing that we had working at the beginning, it's not working anymore. I briefly got the camera preview bit working, but now the entire app refuses to start. Every single part of the project is failing at the moment. It's not working, nothing's working. I can't fix it. I don't know what to do. <laughs> so I'm gonna be honest, I'm starting to question whether somebody with my level of skill can actually complete something like this. To use an old French term, say très fucked. I'm just gonna keep Googling, I'm just gonna keep learning, keep carrying on, and we just have to get there, right? I mean, I can't give up. I'm not gonna give up. So as you can see, I've transitioned into my emotional support hoodie. It's not going very well, if I'm gonna be honest. So there's two different programming languages that you can use in Android Studio. And typically, the one I'm using, the Google examples of how to do it all, aren't in that language. So I'm kind of having to piece it together from different bits of code that I find on the internet. Some of which are like, 12 years old for old versions of it, which isn't very helpful. And I don't understand enough about what's going on to get around some of these errors that I'm getting. I'm getting a lot of errors. Like error after error after error. So it's not going swimmingly. I'm well out of my depth. I've properly thrown myself into the deep end and any other water-based similes you can think of. I think I've been responsible for about half the Google searches in the UK today. So, right now, it's the wee hours. My brain's mush. I'm gonna go let it churn over everything that it's learned today while I sleep. Hopefully in the morning, everything will have just clicked into place and everything will work. Right, so it's a new day and I've got a fresh pair of eyes on me. I've had a look through the code already this morning and I've managed to solve some of the big problems I was having last night that was breaking everything. It turns out it was some of the code I pasted in yesterday. I think it was for an older version and it all just got confused. I mean, looking at it this morning, it was obvious. The error message was telling me exactly what the problem was, but last night my brain just wasn't understanding what it was telling me. So no one's responded to my stack overflow question about it not reading the text in the full image, but I had a thought about that this morning when I was staring at the wall drinking my coffee. Right, so because it'll read the text when it's given a smaller picture, what about if I find a way to automatically cut the picture up into different pieces and pass each piece to the text recognizer? But then I thought, I reckon I'll have to make it overlap in case the text happens to get cut in half when the picture's cropped. So while I was just making that animation with the blue squares, it very strongly reminded me of something. So I think I might have seen that idea yesterday when I was doing all my research and wasn't really paying attention to it. So I'm sorry to whoever's idea I just ripped off. So you might have seen a meme called how to draw an owl. Step one, draw two circles. Step two, draw the rest of the fecking owl. So that's basically exactly what I'm gonna do here. I mean, there's a heck of a lot of work to do. I don't wanna bore you to tears. I'm already halfway through the time that I wanted this video to last. So I'm just gonna crack on and I'll give you the big updates. Okay, so I've done a little bit of tidying up. I've uh, made the picture bigger and I've made a little start camera button. Now, because this is a virtual phone, it doesn't have an actual camera, so it gives you a little, little scene you can look around in. 
as if you're in this kind of 3D room to take pictures. So you press take photo and then it would use that as the picture to read the text from. Now obviously there's no text in this picture but it proves that I can use my app to take photos. Right, so I'm going to work on chopping the picture up into bits because it's really playing on my mind and the whole project kind of hinges on being able to do this. So my cropped version of the picture, where it could read the small text that I want, was about one seventh the width of the full picture. So first I was going to split it into seven by seven squares. But in case the words I want end up being in the middle across two of the sections, I want to overlap the areas I'm scanning. But then this will make the chunks I'm sending to the text recognizer bigger than the size I know it can read. So I'm going to have to split it up into twice as many squares, 14 by 14, so that four of the squares are the right size to pass to the text recognizer. So after doing a bit of scribbling in my handwriting of a three-year-old, it turns out that the code to split the picture up into different squares, I don't think is actually gonna be that difficult. This is where my previous general programming experience has come in very handy. So first of all, we find out how big the picture is in pixels. In this case, it's 4,032 pixels wide and 3,024 pixels high. Then to find out how big each square is, we just divide this width by the number of squares we want and do the same for the height. In this case, each square is 288 pixels wide and 216 pixels high. So to chop a piece out of the picture, we just need to know its top left and bottom right points. So to chop our first piece out, we start at 0, 0 for the top left point and then add on the width and height of two squares to get the bottom right point. So I found some code on the internet for cropping a picture. So all we have to do is pass in these points to it and we have our first piece. After every piece, we make the starting point one square further along. So the next point will be 2880-864-432. When we get to the end, we increase the height coordinates by one square and start on the left again. I'll pause it on the square that's got our text in so you can see how the code has chopped it out for us. Okay, so I think I've sorted out all the bugs in that code that I've written. So let's take it for a test drive. As you can see, I've added in a little text box so we can specify the text that we want to search for now. So we're starting with the full picture now and we know it couldn't find the word glucosamine in that before. So if it does now, we know we've solved that particular problem. Here we go. Glucosamine. Search. So it should write it out down here if it finds it. Come on, come on. I know you can do it, come on. Yeah, look at that, glucosamine, it's found it. It's found it in the picture. We've done it. Okay, so this highlights two things. First off, got no idea if it was searching or not, so I need to add a progress bar. And as you can see, I know the text's only in there once, but it's found it four times, and that's because we're passing it this overlap. So it's gonna find it multiple times. However, when we come to draw a box around the text, it doesn't matter if it draws that box four times because it'll be in the same place. So I don't think I need to do anything to filter it out. So after a bit more Googling, I've figured out how to add a progress bar. Let's just kick off a search. So it uses the total number of squares in the picture as the maximum number up here. And then each time it finishes processing one square, it moves the bar along. So apart from some general tidying up and a few other ideas I've thought of, the last big piece of the puzzle is to actually get it drawing a box around the text that it finds on top of the photograph. I just kind of blindly assumed that we can do this. Eh, we'll figure it out. So I found some code that lets you draw, so now I just need to figure out how to use it. Let's start by just drawing a solid block somewhere on the picture so we can prove it's doable. So lucky for us, there's literally a function called draw rectangle. We just have to give it the coordinates of where we want it to appear. So let's say top left, zero, zero, and bottom right, 1,000, 1,000. So that should give us a nice big square. And we can see up here, I've asked it to do it in red. So I've added a button called draw that we can click to make it run the code. So let's click it and see what happens. Nice, there we go. One red square on top of our photo. So we're going to want it to be just the outline so we can see the text inside the box. So you can set it to a mode called stroke, which means just draw around the edge. Oh, that's absolutely cracking. So how are we going to actually draw the box around the text it finds in the picture? Well, while I was looking through the text recognizer options, I noticed one of the things it gives us when it finds text is called a bounding box. Now a bounding box is just a rectangle that completely surrounds an object. 
Remember how we used the top left and bottom right coordinates to chop the picture up into pieces? Well, the text recognizer gives us the same kind of coordinates for where it finds the text in the photo. I've made a little function that will draw the rectangle where we tell it to. So the coordinates that the text recognizer gives us back, if we plug those into our draw rectangle function, instead of just giving it manual test coordinates, in theory, it'll draw a box around our text when it finds it. I'll also add back in the individual start positions of the boxes, so this will give us the coordinates to its location in the whole photograph rather than just where it is in each little box. Right, so here we go. It's crunch time. I'm excited and I'm nervous. Glue cross them in. Search and draw a box around it. Go. Oh yes, look at that, it's there. It's done it, it's tiny, but it's there. It's found it and it's highlighted it. Ali <laughs> freaking Luya. Let's try another. Oh. My heart's going a mile a minute. Look, it's highlighted shelf. This shelf is for additional stock. Okay, so my board is a bit thick. You can't quite see inside it, but bloody hell it works. Bloody hell. Yeah. I mean, this is exactly what I had in mind. We've done it. We've gone from having an idea in Asda to having an actual working app. Right, I am absolutely buzzing. I'm going to get this app loaded onto my actual phone and we're going to go test it in the real world. Right, I've made just a few improvements to the app just to generally make it a bit slicker. And I've also added my own brand Yachty onto there because having your own brand cool. So the first place I found lots of text is this DVD stand. It's full of DVDs. So this will be where I'm doing my first real world test of the app. So first off, we take a picture. Can I search for one of my favourite films, Amelie? Okay, so picture, Amelie in the search box. Search image. Again, I'm nervous and excited. Real world test, come on. Progress bar's going. It's highlighted something put this little zoom feature in now so you can get closer. There it is, look, Amelie. It's highlighted Amelie. It's actually done it, it worked. <laughs> An app that we've written on my phone is working in real life. How cool is that? When I was branding it, I thought we need a name for it. So I thought real life search, because that's what it does. And that's exactly what we've done. We've searched for something in real life. It's found it for us. Now there is of course one real world final test for the app. So I went right outside in my little geek introvert comfort zone and I asked the Asda duty manager if he'd mind if I came and filmed this last little bit of here. So here we are, back where it all started in the Asda vitamin room. And I need to get some glucosamine for my poorly wrist. But man, I can't find it. If only I had an app that would let me search for things and show me where it was in real life. <laughs> right, so this is it. This is the test. I've got the app on my phone. We're about to do it. So we're going to do it. We're going to start the camera. We're going to take a picture. I'm going to type in glucosamine. I'm going to press search. There it is! Look, it's got it! It's found it! <laughs> it's actually worked. We've made an app. <laughs> we've done it. We had an idea in Asda. We've written an app. We've come back, we've tested it, and we've done it. Yes! <laughs> that was a lame high five. <laughs> I can't oh. see when I'm filming. Okay. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> so there we have it. An idea that turned into an emotional roller coaster for me and a deep dive into the world of Android apps. So there's nothing stopping me from polishing it up and putting it into the Android Play Store. If I figure out how to do that, I'll put a link down in the description so you can download it if you want and have a play for yourself. There's a couple of things I'd like to do extra with it. I'd like to figure out how to speed it up a bit, although it, it did run a lot faster on my actual phone compared to the emulator on the computer. Uh, and another thing that I've realised it can't do is search for text that's sideways or upside down. So maybe I could find a way to rotate the picture, search again, rotate the picture, search again. But again, that'll take extra time, so I'd need to figure out how to speed it up first before I could do that. So I hope you enjoyed following me on this little adventure. If you did, please like the video. Do me a favour and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos about things where I needlessly jump into projects that I know nothing about. This is me and Sebastian signing off. Ah.